And, and just to remind everyone, we do have a policy panel after these uh, this, uh, two more faculty talks. We will be hopefully discussing exactly these questions, which you brought up very nicely, Mur. Our next speaker is Dimitri Bertimas. Dimitri, come on up. Good afternoon. So to motivate what I'm about to say, last May I was involved in a corporate transaction, a company I was involved was sold, and for the last, you know, late May, for mid-April until May, uh, the, you know, two major legal firms were exchanging documents about this transaction. Um, I tried to follow a significant uh, transaction, and. Uh, the overall agreement was about 1,000 pages, and the total cost was about seven, dollars $800,000. And the number of hours spent, I spent, was roughly four hours a day times seven, <laughs> you know, times uh, six weeks. It was a significant amount of energy. And from our legal team, there were about 12 lawyers, maybe you know, mostly junior lawyers, but two senior lawyers, and from the other team were 20. You know, it was really, I don't know if you have been involved in uh, these transactions, this has been a serious business. So, on all aspects. So, the, a natural question arose to me. Uh, you know, uh, this is a period that for the last year, ChatGPT has been with us. So, the question was that I wanted to ask, is it possible to simplify this process? Is it possible to decrease its cost? To, and most importantly, sometimes uh, improve the results because uh, some of these iterations were not monotonically increasing. Sometimes, I, 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 not that I'm an expert, although having seen uh, multiple of these contracts over many years, uh, I can tell you they were not monotonically increasing. So as a result, it was, I'm also curious about these technologies, by no means expert on the matter. Actually, very few people are, given how junior, how, how the technology is. So I'm about to tell you uh, some experiments we have done uh, with a large, one of the largest uh, companies in the world on, in their area, together with a colleague of mine, former student here at MIT, uh, within a company that I'm involved, Dynamic Ideas. I call it Legal Generative AI. So just to remind you, consider a negotiation. This is a simpler story. This is not five, you know, 800 pages. This is more of a 20, 30 pages contract. Uh, consider a negotiation of legal contracts between an op opposing councils of a buyer and a seller. Okay? So typical situation, a seller sends a contract for purchase. The buyer response modifications, they exchange Word files that have autom automated tracking mechanism. For those of you that have worked with, uh, with files, I bet this is a familiar, a familiar uh, story. And so on. So given these are not as complex uh, contracts, there might be five, six, seven, eight iterations on this. Okay? So, Typical of this process is that it creates several versions of a legal document, and at each iteration, somebody, typically a junior associate and then a more senior lawyer overseas, uh, they vet these modifications, made proposals. You know, the, the, it's not the only way they communicate. They also communicate by phone. Of course, I don't have their phone. Uh, the, the data that I have is all the versions of these iterations. The majority of these iterations is through Word files. So the, the, the contracts are not so complex that they could, th there are some, but uh, less, uh, less prevalent. Examples of use cases that we have tried is buyer and seller contracts. These are the ones I'm presenting today because these are given the time. We have also worked on collaborative uh, contracts uh, between uh, two universities, consulting contracts between uh, a client and a uh, and a consulting company, and employee-employer contracts, and so forth. So while I'm focusing on buyer-seller, we have actually tried a variety of contracts uh, of uh, increasing complexity. So what is the motivation, again, to reduce human errors in canceling problematic clauses to improve the turnaround time? Significant. And also, my hope was to improve quality. And to tell you the truth, my prior in the beginning, it was 
it might do something, but I wasn't too optimistic. That was my prior. Okay. So, uh, you, I already made, made comments about the process that we use. So we use Chat GPT 3.5, what is commonly used as um, Chat GPT. So, and the way we have approached the problem is that we have used with the, with the team had us, but also have two, two lawyers, reasonably senior in the firm, to, uh, who gave us uh, comments, and then we used to, uh, to add prompting. You know, we, we basically uh, had a series of uh, uh, prompts to, to basically train the system, and, and we train it also using imp the information we get from all the, the comments that go back and forth, because we knew them. So this, this generated, this is the knowledge base we have utilized. We have used of the order of maybe 2,000 of such contracts, 2,000. So, and I would like to give you two examples, right? And I would like you to take the following perspective. I would like to, uh, to think whether, so this is the original clause. This is modified, the seller sends this clause. So far, everything is human. So this is the original clause. This is a modified by the buyer clause. It, it might be, it's boring to do, but it's, uh, that's the only way I can explain. Because, so if you can bear with me reading uh, before and after. So, you know, maybe I summarize. I, I, in fact, it's boring, huh? So, <laughs> so, we instructed the generative AI to do two tasks. Number one, so these are now computer generated. This might be more interesting. So the analysis is automatic, automatically generated. I'm just reading. It says the buyer proposes automatic renewal of the agreement for successive one year periods after the initial term. Renewal will be on the same terms and conditions unless terminated by either party with a three months notice before the expiration of the initial term or any subsequent renewal term. It's an accurate assessment. I mean, I can tell you I've read the, the boring part. You haven't. But it is an accurate assessment of what it's done, right? Suggestions for the seller. The automatic renewal proposed by the buyer may limit the seller's flexibility. It is advisable for the seller to negotiate a provision that allows for adjustments in pricing or terms in the event of renewal. The seller may also propose a shorter notice period for termination during the automatic renewal period to provide more flexibility. I'll say, in my human eyes, not an expert legal, legal mind, uh, it looks good advice. And then it proposes the suggested modifications, all of this in the order of seconds. Yeah? And then the, the, the yellow is the key proposal, says it basically, uh, implements the suggestion, namely that uh, in this agreement, let's terminate by other party within a two months notice before the expiration of the initial term and so forth. So it implemented that. I repeat the suggestion here, and these are the, the comments by the humans who are the consumers, so to speak, the, the, the senior lawyer who is, uh, as, is involved in the team of giving us uh, in, uh, comments. Uh, he, he, the, 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 it was a lady. The lady said that depending on the interactions we receive from sales representatives, we adapt this clause. It says this, he, uh, summarize. The, the clause was appropriate, but whether is, that this is not wrong. But, who, uh, but uh, the, uh, these terms are all also dependent on what the sales department believes and given the relation of the customers. In other words, it's not just a legal negotiation. There's also a component of relation between companies, long-term contracts, because not, that's not the only contract they have. So uh, this, in fact, resulted in uh, creating a structure in which the, we, the algorithm gets input from the sales department. So now there are two inputs, the legal input and the sales department, the degree to which their relation matters, because there are subsequent contracts and so forth. To be honest, this effort, uh, in my eyes, was a success. In other words, it was, it was um, and I did not pick the best ones. I didn't pick the worst ones, I picked the middle ones, the, the ones that uh, 
um, that I felt uh, were successful, but not over the top. As you see, there are comments on the other side. Here's another example. And I, 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 um, I spare you, but there was significant rewrite. The first one was a relatively light change. This is more significant change. The, the change of the legal language, it says, uh, this is a matter of, they, they change the terms of the contract, actually, in a fundamental way. So this is the analysis, I repeat it again. This is again automated. The buyer changes the timing of the annual forecast from 30 days prior to the end of the contract to 30 days prior to the beginning of the relevant contract year. The lifting schedule for the volume is to be evenly spread over the course of its contract. The quarterly forecast of monthly deliveries is to be communicated at least 15 days prior to the beginning of this quarter. And the monthly loading schedule should be confirmed by both parties at least 15 days before the beginning of each month. So a material difference in, in the contract. Uh, there are suggestions that are also were implemented. And to give you an example, so the yellow are the additions that ChatGPT gave after a lot of prompting, admittedly. The lifting schedule for the volume is to be reasonably spread over the course of its contract year with flexibility to accommodate operational constraints. So uh, the comment of the, of the humans is that the first wording is more protective, but sometimes the buyers do not accept it. So in other words, they felt that given the relation, the proposal the, uh, that uh, ChatGPT gave was appropriate, it was actually on the money, on, uh, on uh, enhancing the relation and so forth. Of course, you know, given the time, we have done, as I told you, 2,000 contracts for buyers and sellers, several thousands of consulting, several thousands um, that are being trained. My assessment, actually my assessment is not that important. What is more important is the legal themes assessment of that, because they will be the users of that. And we are currently, this started in uh, June, and we are now in November, uh, near December. Uh, we are in final stages where the software now is being used as an advisory, not as a replacement, to the entirety, the team has about maybe 30 lawyers. So including senior ones. And uh, nobody's telling me that what the hell is he talking about. So there are some failures. It's not like uh, you, you, you can automatically use it without any human intervention. That would be, uh, that's not where it is. But uh, the effects were that this seller, this, the contracts I gave you, there are typically 20 page contracts. The most complicated was a consulting agreement was more than 120 pages. So typically contracts like that can be analyzed with concrete proposals, phrase by phrase in a document in about a few minutes, two, three minutes. Typically it takes a, a junior associate of a firm several days to go over, over, over this. And, and iterations also with a senior team. So I, would, I have also observed, although I don't saw it, that the quality of analysis and the proposals are improving over iterations primarily because we are using more and more data to, to, to help the prompting and the, and the training. Finally, uh, in the opinion of the senior lawyers of the firm, the, the quality is comparable to an associate, to a junior associate. The junior associate in these firms you know, charge you know, $400, $500 an hour. Uh, so my preliminary conclusions is that I, I find this an exciting application of the generative AI. Uh, I think we will, it will be used in 2024 to make reasonable recommendations. And uh, I believe my, my final uh, test would be to try it on the contract that I have been involved in in May, the 800 pages, to see what it does. It doesn't matter anymore, but I would have been interested to, to observe. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? One question. One question. Yes, sir. Um, at the end of the day, the, um, the contracts um, and the feedback from lawyers is all about risk. What Indeed. is the risk and likelihood? Do you see opportunities that these systems can give a risk quotient in addition to the language? The answer is yes, 
but with data. In other words, to, to be able to say all these things, you also need to know outcomes. You, in other words, most of these contracts have hypotheticals that never happen. They try to protect against uh, things that uh, do not happen. If we have uh, some factuals, potentially the combination of more traditional uh, machine learning and this might be, but uh, we are not close to that. 